In this lesson, you will learn about the new pharmacoepidemiological approach utilizing real-world data that Japan has implemented in its pharmacovigilance activities. First of all, this slide shows shared perceptions of the importance of pharmacovigilance activities, especially repeated safety assessments in the post-marketing phase. When submitting a new drug application, regulatory authorities review the efficacy and safety of the drug based on the results of its clinical trials. A pharmaceutical company is required to prepare adequate information to evaluate quality, efficacy, and safety as part of the submission process. However, the amount of data available may be limited, particularly for assessing overall safety among the target patients for the drug. This limitation of available data is known as the five twos. Too few, too middle-aged, too short, too restricted, and too narrow. Roughly speaking, the results of clinical trials are obtained using 1. a limited number of patients, 2. mainly middle-aged patients, 3. short follow-up periods compared with actual patients in clinical practice, 4. restricted concomitant use of drugs, 5. and a narrower range of clinical condition variety than patients in the real world. The right panel shows an example of limitation number two. This is the patient age distribution in hypertension clinical trials and the estimated number of patients in clinical practice in Japan. As you can see, most patients are over 75 in clinical practice, but these types of elderly patients are not enrolled in clinical trials. This data indicates that patients enrolled in clinical trials do not always accurately represent actual patients in clinical practice. Especially at the time of drug approval, little information is available on the difference in the magnitude of safety between elderly patients and those younger than 65. For this reason, it is essential to evaluate safety concerns among actual patients in clinical practice by gathering real-world data in the post-marketing phase. Japanese pharmaceutical regulations require marketing authorization holders to perform pharmacovigilance activities, routine activities, and additional activities in accordance with a risk management plan approved by PMDA. The regulations also require marketing authorization holders to perform re-examination to confirm the safety and clinical effectiveness of approved drugs during the re-examination period. Results of additional pharmacovigilance activities are required as part of the application materials for the re-examination period. For this reason, marketing authorization holders must perform these activities in compliance with the Good Post-Marketing Study Practices Ministerial Ordinance. This is part of Japan's pharmaceutical regulations. In October 2017, the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare MHLW, released an amendment to the ministerial ordinance. The amendment was intended to reinforce post-marketing safety measures. It enabled marketing authorization holders to use real-world data for assessing post-marketing drug safety and regulatory submissions. This is called post-marketing database study. At the moment, there are no internationally harmonized regulations for the utilization of real-world data in post-marketing safety assessments and regulatory submissions. For this reason, PMDA and MHLW have released many guidelines and notifications to promote the appropriate use of real-world data for assessing drug safety. For example, these releases describe the following. 1. How to plan and design pharmacoepidemiological studies utilizing real-world data. 2. What should be considered for regulatory submissions. 3. How to ensure the quality and reliability of the data. 4. How to plan post-marketing database studies as a pharmacovigilance activity. 5. What should be written in study protocols. And 6. How to conduct a validation study on outcome definitions. In Japan, some marketing authorization holders are currently planning post-marketing database studies, and the number of post-marketing database studies is expected to increase further in the future. Conventionally, 
Post-marketing drug safety assessment mainly relies on spontaneous adverse drug reaction reports, research reports, and information from overseas regulatory agencies. Spontaneous reports are essential for assessing the causal relationship between drug use and adverse reactions and are also useful for detecting uncommon or unexpected adverse reactions after drugs enter the market. In addition to these conventional data sources, PMDA has started to utilize real-world data as an additional data source for assessing post-marketing drug safety, focusing especially on electronic healthcare records. PMDA has access to two databases of this data, MidNet and the National Claims Database. This slide shows the main characteristics of the two databases. MidNet is a distributed database system of electronic medical record data from a total of 23 partner hospitals in Japan, as of August 2021. The database contains data for over 5 million patients, which is approximately 3% of the entire Japanese population. Medical services information is collected only from the partner hospitals. However, other detailed medical information, such as inpatient and outpatient medical records and laboratory test results data provided by the partner hospitals, is also included. The National Claims Database is a centralized database system that contains all of the health insurance claims data in Japan. Every citizen in Japan has been required to join some form of health insurance program since the 1960s, and almost all administrative claims data has been digitized since 2010. Therefore, this database contains medical claims for nearly the entire Japanese population. PMDA can use this database to follow up on medical treatment for each patient, even if the treatment is provided by different hospitals. Currently, PMDA conducts various pharmacoepidemiological studies for assessing drug safety utilizing the real-world data contained in these databases. The next few slides show two practical examples of regulatory decision-making at PMDA using this data. The first example is a risk evaluation for pegfilgrastim for thrombocytopenia, utilizing MidNet data. Pegfilgrastim is a human granulocyte colony-stimulating factor, GCSF, preparation, which is used to treat neutropenia. Since the marketing of pegfilgrastim in 2014, Several spontaneous adverse drug reaction reports indicating severe thrombocytopenia in patients treated with pegfilgrastim have been reported. However, it was not easy to assess the causal relationship between pegfilgrastim and thrombocytopenia. The approved indication of pegfilgrastim is prophylaxis of neutropenia caused by antineoplastic agents. This means that pegfilgrastim is usually administered to patients on cancer chemotherapy. Therefore, there is an undeniable possibility that the thrombocytopenia could be caused by antineoplastic agents rather than pegfilgrastim. Thus, PMDA decided to investigate the association between GCSF preparations, including pegfilgrastim, and thrombocytopenia in patients treated with cancer chemotherapy. This study was a nested case control study utilizing the medical information database MidNet. Because MidNet contains blood test results such as platelet counts, the occurrence of thrombocytopenia was defined by decreased platelet counts of less than 50,000. The study cohort consisted of patients receiving treatment for cancer chemotherapy divided into case and control groups depending on the occurrence of thrombocytopenia. Next, we evaluated the association between the use of GCSF preparations and the occurrence of thrombocytopenia by calculating odds ratios for the case and control groups. This figure shows the relative risk of thrombocytopenia in patients using pegfilgrastim compared with the risk in patients not administered any GCSF preparations. In the study cohort, 733 patients were identified exhibiting thrombocytopenia during cancer chemotherapy as the case group, and over 5,000 patients with no instance of thrombocytopenia as the control group. Among the case group, 14 patients were prescribed pegfilgrastim before exhibiting thrombocytopenia. Exact patient numbers less than 10 cannot be shared due to the MidNet publication guidelines for protecting patient privacy. Notably, 
the relative risk of thrombocytopenia was significantly increased in patients who were prescribed pegfilgrastim two to seven days before the thrombocytopenia, compared with patients not administered any GCSF preparations. This result was consistent with additional analyses in this study. Therefore, PMDA decided to take safety regulatory action to provide information about the concern of an increased risk of thrombocytopenia by adding a statement to that effect to the other precautions section in the package insert for pegfilgrastim. The second example is a risk evaluation of urate-lowering drugs for cardiovascular events utilizing NDB. In 2017, the FDA concluded that febuxostat could increase the risk of cardiovascular death and all-cause mortality when compared with allopurinol, based on an analysis of post-market clinical trial data called the KARIS trial. This conclusion led to an update of the U.S. febuxostat prescribing information in February 2019. Thereafter, the use of febuxostat was limited to patients for whom treatment with allopurinol was ineffective or caused severe side effects. In July 2019, the Febuxostat package insert was also revised in Japan to indicate the increased risk of cardiovascular death based on the results of the KARIS trial and a post-marketing study in Japan, as well as other related information. However, the extrapolability of the risk of cardiovascular events identified in the KARIS trial to Japan remains unclear for three reasons. One, lower cardiovascular risks have been reported in the Japanese population than in the European and American populations. Two, fewer Asian subjects were enrolled in the KARIS trial, approximately 70% white versus approximately 3% Asians. And three, no increased cardiovascular death induced by febuxostat was identified in clinical trials conducted in Japan. Therefore, to attain a more complete understanding of the cardiovascular risk of febuxostat in Japan, PMDA conducted a pharmacoepidemiology study using NDB to compare the risk of cardiovascular events associated with febuxostat, topiroxostat, and allopurinol. Topiroxostat is a drug with pharmacological action similar to febuxostat, and it is only approved in Japan. The study design was a cohort design utilizing NDB. Patients prescribed urate-lowering drugs were included between August 1, 2010 and March 31, 2018, and excluded patients who fulfilled one or more of eight exclusion criteria. Patients were categorized into exposure or control groups based on the type of urate-lowering drug they were prescribed first. The primary outcome of this study was the occurrence of cardiovascular events, including acute coronary syndrome, cerebral infarction, and cerebral hemorrhage. Next, we evaluated the association between the use of urate-lowering drugs and the occurrence of cardiovascular events by estimating hazard ratios using the Cox proportional hazards model. This table shows the incident rates of outcomes in each group and the crude hazard ratios and adjusted hazard ratios for the exposure group and the control group. As you can see, there were no increased cardiovascular risks associated with febuxostat or topiroxostat compared with allopurinol in Japan. PMDA conducted a safety assessment of the risk of febuxostat and topiroxostat based on the present study results and other available data, including spontaneous adverse drug reaction reports, medical literature, and the results of the FAST trial, and concluded that no additional regulatory actions are currently warranted. In the past few years, PMDA has collaborated with foreign agencies and industry organizations to share experience and knowledge regarding the utilization of real-world data. One of the essential activities for promoting its use for regulatory purposes is international harmonization of technical requirements. A reflection paper related to a strategic approach to the harmonization of technical scientific requirements for pharmacoepidemiological studies was accepted by ICH, and a discussion group was organized in 2019. We discussed the harmonizable area regarding the use of real-world data for regulatory purposes and proposed a concept paper outline for this new topic. In November 2021, the concept paper outline was accepted by ICH and an expert working group, EWG, 
was established for creating a new harmonized guideline entitled General Principles on Planning and Designing Pharmacoepidemiological Studies that Utilize Real-World Data for Safety Assessment of a Medicine. This proposed guideline will outline general considerations and recommendations for use of real-world data for safety assessment of drugs, vaccines, and other biological products, including defining the research question, data source selection or generation, study design, definitions of target populations, exposure, outcomes, and covariates, data sources fit for purpose evaluation, sources of and methods to address confounding and bias, analytic approaches, and formats and content for reporting. A draft document is currently being developed, and the anticipated time required to complete and establish the guideline is two to three years, by January 2025.